The next section of the book is called Painted Windows, and we're on chapter 22. The first Saturday in August featured perfect flea market clouds, sun blockers, but not rainmaker clouds. The tables on the gravel acre along Ridge Pike displayed everything from watches to monkey wrenches. One of the tables was rented by Refrigerator John, who in turn donated a third of his space to Primrose. David helped arrange the wares from their Thursday night shopping sprees. One of them was a toilet seat. A sign taped to it said, wouldn't this make a charming picture frame? There were also two paperback mystery novels, a painting of a bullfighter on velvet, an old blue-green Coke bottle, five baseball cards, a hubcap, an orange-colored bowl, a vase, a beaded lizard-looking pocketbook, and under the table, the child's rocking chair that John had repaired. Primrose was even grumpier than usual this day. John had decided not to have a bait business after all, so there was no, as there was no market for worms. Primrose was still $20 short on paint money, and the customers strolling by the tables were mostly the same ones she saw every week. Lookers, not buyers, John called them. Lookers drifted sideways toward the table, never facing it squarely, never quite standing still, moving along even as they eyed the goods. Sometimes they gave a quick glance and were gone, sometimes a slower broom sweep of the eyes. Occasionally, a pair of eyes would land on a particular object, stare a moment, and then look up at Primrose as if to see what sort of oddball would actually ask money for such a thing. Even more rarely, someone would pick up an object and say, how much? Primrose's heart would quicken as she told them the price and sink as they set it back down and walked off. Early in the summer, Primrose had taken John's advice and treated each table approach like a golden opportunity. She would rise from her chair, stand smartly behind the table, and smile as the person looked over the merchandise and walked off. As the summer went on, she dropped that she dropped first the she dropped her smile, then she dropped her smart pose. Now it took the sight of an open wallet to get her out of her chair. She slumped and grumped and stared into outer space and muttered with the regularity of a grandfather clock. I don't like this business, she said. Half the morning had gone by on this day when a shopper finally held up something, the Coke bottle, and said, how much? Ah, what do you care, Primrose snarled. The shopper gaped disbelievingly at the slouching girl, set the bottle back down, and left. To the next one who said, how much? Primrose answered, a thousand dollars. By 11 o'clock, she was challenging nearly everyone who came near the table. You gonna look or are you gonna buy? You touch it, you buy it. What you looking at? When he wasn't laughing, John was begging her to stop. You're ruining my business, he said. Meanwhile, word about the rude teenager spread across the fleet of tables. Primrose's behavior was neither new nor entertaining to David, so he occupied himself by eating. Every half hour, he visited the vending truck. By 11 o'clock, his stomach was stuffed with po and his pocket was empty of all but a dime. What could he buy for a dime? He wandered among the tables, scanning the goods, clothes, knickknacks, books, tools, toys, utensils. But when he came to a table half covered with framed black and white photographs, he barely gave it a glance, but then he stopped cold. He came closer. The pictures were all of people's faces. The frames were fancy, tinted with gold and silver. They came in many sizes. At least half of them, 10 he counted, were pictures of the same man, like TV st sets in a store, all turned to the same channel. And here was the shocker. Each one looked exactly like the little one in Primrose's pocket and the bigger one on her dresser in her four-wheeled room. That same handsome face, the same mustache, the same sly, slightly tilted smile, the same black, shiny comb back hair. Primrose's father. What was a picture of Primrose's father doing here? Why were they selling it? 
Why would anyone other than Primrose or her mother want to buy it? See something you like, said the lady behind the table. David didn't know what to say. Looking for a present for somebody, the lady was eating a hot dog. A spot of mustard gave her upper lip a yellow mole. Your mother, maybe? <clears throat> no. She let him look a while. She bit into the hot dog. This ain't used junk like most of the tables. This is new stuff. David said nothing. She pointed with the hot dog. That there's a nice one you're looking at. It's only three bucks. Three bucks for Primrose's father's picture? Okay, for you, I'll give it to you for fifty or for two dollars and fifty cents. David said, How come you're selling his picture? I'm not, said the lady. Her tongue, like a night crawler, slid out, poked around her upper lip till the yellow spot of mustard was gone then floop back into its hole. It's the frames I'm selling, not the pictures. I just want a picture, said David. Two bucks and you get the whole shebang. David held up a dime. This is all I have. A voice croaked. Give the kid a picture. The voice came from an old man in a lawn chair. He was eating something out of a plastic cup. The lady growled. What am I, Santa Claus? Give it to him. The lady glared at the old man, glared at David. She snorted like a horse, snatched one of the small silvery frames. She worked out the picture and jabbed it, scowling at David. Merry Christmas. David took it and walked away, and now he wondered, why? Why had he asked for it? What was he going to do with it? He didn't know. He stared at the picture. Could he be wrong? No. Thanks to Primrose, he had seen the face too many times to be wrong. This was the man, all right. Her father, Bob. So why wasn't he racing to her and shouting, Primrose, look, your father's picture. It's all over the table there. Because something didn't feel right. Something so wispy it would not feel the hollow of a thought. Something that made him want to drape a sheet over the table of gold and silver frames. Across a dozen tables, he could see Primrose. She was lobbing popcorn at the backs of people who had failed to stop at her table. He put the picture in his pocket. Minutes later, it was Primrose who came running. She was waving money. Look, 25 bucks. Some lady bought the orange bowl. She said it's called Fiesta Wear and she has a whole set of it except for the bowl. And she said she would take $25 for it. She grabbed his arm. Come on, we're packing up. We're going to get paint.